May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> the eminent and renowned biblical scholar, now deceased, William Barclay, tells the story of a faithful servant girl. One has to imagine Gosford Park and perhaps Downton Abbey. It comes from the days when a domestic servant was expected to work all day, and that really meant a good part of the night as well. The young woman said that because of her work, she had so little time to practice her faith between Sundays. So she said she took the used morning newspaper to bed with her, and she turned to the family notices columns and read the birth notices. She prayed for the babes that had just come into the world. Then she turned to the marriages column and prayed for true happiness for the couples mentioned there. Then finally she, finally she read the death notices and prayed for God's comfort for all who mourned and were sad. William Barclay concludes, No one in this world will ever know what blessing to unknown people came from an attic bedroom from one who prayed in such wise. That young woman had so little time of her own, but what time she had, she spent praying for the needs of others. It didn't matter to her that she didn't know them. It didn't matter to her uh, that, she, that cynics would have criticized her for the effort. It didn't matter to her that she was denying herself time for herself in very hard-pressed circumstances. She just did it because she knew it to be an outworking of her Lord's compassion and care. Her need to pray always and not to lose heart. Just in the same way, we pray here at St. Thomas the Apostle daily at the offices of matins and vespers, as well as at the daily mass, for countless individuals who are in any need or necessity from far and wide across the world, members of our own parish family in this place and members of other communities connected with our parishioners and our friends. I guess that in our contemporary way of looking at things, praying always, in the sense of trying to center one's emotions and thoughts, and dwelling on the inward aspects of life, is reckoned to be a very good thing. Much is spoken of of centering prayer, meditation, and spirituality as an effective tool in coping with life. And during our Advent study course, uh, later on this year, we will be hearing from the Buddhist tradition, the uh, Jewish tradition, and the Jesuit tradition about centering prayer and liturgy and uh, those differing aspects. But that is not what she was about. She was doing what many consider to be the most problematic aspect of prayer. She was praying for others. She was interceding and doing so not even for her own loved ones and friends, but for total strangers. Remarkable. She did it and she didn't lose heart. That is persistence in prayer and in faith. 
I don't think, however, that she considered what she was doing as any kind of achievement on her part. Indeed, the way William Barclay tells the story brings with it the implication that she considered this all she could manage in the circumstances given her hard-pressed time. It's as if she thought that she were well that if she were wealthier or had a less menial job or could take more charge of her time, she would have been a better disciple. Her story is an inspiration to all of us who have so much more time than she did but still can't keep at it in the way she did. Like the widow in today's parable who was constantly bothering the judge, she simply kept at it. But unlike the widow in the parable, she didn't worry about outcomes. She relentlessly did it. We have to admit that such determination comes hard to us. It's all too easy to tell yourself that you can't keep at it, that you're failing at prayer, that it's such a struggle that losing heart comes all too easily. The widow in the parable has indignation and anger to keep her pestering the judge. We can imagine such emotions being a constant spur. But so often the world seems full of failed Christians. So often people say to me, I know I shouldn't be afraid, Father, but I am. Loss of heart? Well, maybe. But I have to say it is not a failure in Christian faithfulness to be frightened of hospitalization or surgery or illness or pain. People sometimes say, I know, Father, that I shouldn't feel this way. It's wrong to be angry. It shouldn't be hurt. I shouldn't be hurt by the way they treat me. That's not being a Christian. But who says Christians aren't to be hurt when other people snub them or they face hostility or vicious gossip? The parable is told to the disciples today precisely because Christ knows how hard it is to persist in prayer, how hard it is to love one's enemies and pray for their well-being. Well, I just can't pray like that, Father. When they say, we'll keep silence now, I feel panic rising within me. And when everyone chips in in their prayers, I squirm. I'm not spirit-filled like them, people say to me. Who says prayer has to be like this or like that? There are lots of ways to pray. No one should try to program another's response. Pray always, yes, but pray as you can, not as you can't. It may be 10 minutes in the garden. It may be 20 minutes down at Santa Monica watching the sun sink beneath the horizon. It may be playing with your children. That is a profound way to pray and to understand more about the mysteries of God, ourselves, and our universe. Behind these and many other anxieties is the notion that once you've got faith, as it were, life becomes easy. I don't know whoever started that, yet that isn't what Christ taught. He was plain that encouragement is often needed, that losing heart is a common experience, and that steadfastness 
steadfastness in faith does not come easily. Persistence in the parable moves the unjust judge to do the right thing. How much more can the just judge, God himself, be relied upon for compassion and care to those people who are oppressed by troubles? It's all so easy to put ourselves down, as if we have to live up to some kind of impossible ideal. We imagine that saints are those squeaky clean individuals who never had an angry word, who never lost their tempers, who were always perfectly meek and mild. That certainly wasn't the case with John the Baptist, nor with Mother Jones, nor with Martin Luther King Jr. But that's to put all the emphasis, of course, on ourselves, when we think we have to be squeaky clean. Our reliance should be on the just judge himself. He it bless you. He it is who is the champion of the one who prays. It's not that all depends on the one that prays, but that all depends on the one to whom the prayers are offered. Faith does not insulate us from the turmoil of human living, and hope always comes hard. Praying always without losing heart is part of the struggle of faith and human being. It's a willed determination that God can be relied upon, even when we, the prayers, are all too consci conscious of our hesitance, our insecurity, and our poverty of motivation. Today's parable reassures us that we win through by the grace of God. There is no way to bypass what life brings. Keep hopeful, keep prayerful, keep at it, in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.